Hello, welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Stella Baines and I'm the Social Action Manager at Young Citizens and I'm here to share with you some of our thoughts and feelings about uh, social action projects taking place in primary schools um, during COVID-19 times and to give you some ideas and some inspiration hopefully to take your Make a Difference Challenge projects further. So I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, so what does school social action look like in coronavirus times? So I'm going to look at why social action is even more important in schools now than ever. Some of the reasons why it isn't happening. Um, some ideas for adapting projects to make them COVID secure, but still worthwhile. And just a little bit about uh, ideas for social action during periods of quarantine. So we believe that social action is what our communities really need right now. There's a real feeling of disconnect, and even distrust within communities. This is not surprising. We've had months of being told to stay apart. So people are quite worried now about connecting with other people and feeling quite disconnected. With this, there's an increased feeling of isolation in the communities and a real frustration and feeling powerless and unable to improve the situation, which does feel like it's been going on forever. Social action is what our children need right now. We're hearing the term recovery curriculum everywhere about giving our children time and space to heal from this very strange experience. We know that group social action projects help children to form or re-establish their connections to peers. And we know that they allow children to regain some feeling of having control and feeling good about themselves and their positive actions. We're hearing that children's mental health is widely spoken about, really worry, a real worry at the moment. And we know that there are proven benefits to those who carry out social action projects. We know that they would re help reduce anxiety by encouraging children to think beyond themselves and their immediate needs. They improve self-confidence and self-esteem. So we think there's never been a more important time for children to connect to and to support their local communities for them and for us. The fact that you're reading this means that you believe in the importance of social action, but what is it that's getting in the way? So we've spent the last six to eight weeks talking to schools around the, uh, around the country, the schools that are delivering our Make a Difference Challenge. What are they saying? So what we're hearing is that social distancing, working in smaller bubbles, not being allowed to take children off site, not being allowed to have guest speakers in, real core curriculum pressures to deliver, and children in and out of quarantine, not to mention staff, that all of these are really real factors, meaning that social action is getting pushed down that list of priorities. So how can you work in a COVID secure way and still make your project worthwhile? If you think back to your teacher training, for the Make a Difference Challenge, and in particular this task wheel, you remember that there are several distinct parts to the challenge. The early parts present few complications with regards to being COVID secure. The children complete research to decide what issue they'd like to make a difference to. They think about different causes and effects. They seek expert advice and support where appropriate. And this could still happen remotely via video link or a pre-record. And they create an action plan of how they will go about making change. Incidentally, in response to the concerns about children having missed so much school this year, that a focus on the core curriculum is the absolute priority. We would argue that a good social action project forms the basis of a good curriculum, that there are opportunities to develop number skills through projects. So, for example, if they were doing a litter project, they might be calculating the weight of litter collected. They may be developing science knowledge when researching the length of time it takes for different materials to degrade in the soil. And they'll develop literacy skills from learning how to write persuasive letters to local business owners, asking them to switch to non-plastic straws. But back to the tricky part of social action in COVID times, it's the implement part of the project, that the let's do it section that has the potential to be a stumbling block, the part of the project where children and community come together. Whilst it is, this is also the most exciting part, in a COVID-19 world of social distancing, limiting off-site visits and contact with other people generally, 
This thought can be the tipping point at which schools abandon all idea of continuing with such a project. So what's really important to remember is that this is really just about 35% of your whole project. And so if you can think creatively around what your particular stumbling blocks are, then that 35% of time does not need to dictate whether the project can happen at all. It's a case of adapting what you're doing rather than abandoning it. So let's look at some examples. So the school says, we were planning to clean up a graffiti covered wall near to our school. Okay, so how about the children, they can write to the council about the problem. They can seek permissions to do something about it. They can research and create a series of designs. But in that moment when they're doing that, that let's do it implement part of the uh, challenge comes along. How about commissioning a local graffiti artist to carry out the work or just somebody else, one person, rather than having to take all of the children out of school to do it? What about a school that wants to raise awareness through, throughout the community about the importance of recycling? Straight away, warning bells, oh gosh, we can't let the children have contact with the local community at the moment. But how about the children research and audit the options? They can register the school as a recycling hub for all the community, whether that's felt tips or crisp packets or unwanted shoes or a battery's collection point, and then provide plastic crates outside the school gates to quarantine donations in. People can come along during the day, leave their donations in a socially distanced way. You can quarantine those and at a later date, the children then can um, sort them and process them. We were setting up a befriending link between the school and a local care home. Okay, warning bells, can't have the children working with very frail older people. So how about instead you record the children reading poems and or they can write postcards and letters to residents to send in to develop and maintain that link during this period. We were going to redevelop the land behind our school into a bee and butterfly friendly wild garden and now we can't take them off site, for example. So how about creating wildflower seed bombs or setting seeds into recycled juice carton planters that can be given away to community members to put into their own gardens with an accompanying note about the decline in insect populations. So the final outcome, the wanting to help those insect populations is still met. You've just changed the delivery slightly. We want to create a drama performance about an issue close to our hearts and invite the local community in to see it. Can't have people in school at the moment. So how about instead that you record the performance on video and that you unveil it at a certain time and invite people to dial into Vimeo or YouTube um, to watch it at home, make a big deal out of it. Just have it uploaded say for 48 hours. We wanted to campaign for more bins in the park and to have a school-wide litter pick day. Okay, so get the children to write to the council or local businesses about the problem, and then maybe conduct family-led litter picks over the course of a month, adding the total items picked to a community-wide totaliser to share with the council. We were going to survey local residents about the problem of pollution and petition the council for action. Don't forget there are electronic surveys that you can use and there are online platforms that you can use for campaigns. You could do supporting videos for council officials created by the children. We were hoping to run a day of Christmas activities to raise money for our local homeless shelter. So do something like a shoebox campaign instead. You ask families to donate from a list of items which are then quarantined and then packed into boxes later for distribution to the homeless over Christmas. So those are just some ideas of ways that you could make your projects more COVID secure with a slight tweak in the delivery part of the project. So rather than abandoning them, you just change it slightly, you adapt it. And it's time for action. So what I would say is get started today while you're thinking about it, while you're feeling hopefully a bit more enthused, have a look again about your project plan for the Make a Difference Challenge.
identify what your particular COVID barriers are because they are different from school to school and area to area. Make a plan of what it is your final outcome is. What is it that your group of children want to achieve? Get in touch with us for advice and support. We may know of another school that's doing a very similar project who have thought of a really creative way around it. That's all great, but now my pupils are in quarantine. Well, just to check that you know that we do have a downloadable activity pack for children called the Making a Difference from Home um, activity pack. It contains a mini social action project that they can complete on their own at home. They have a choice of topics, caring for my friends and family, caring for my community, or caring for my planet. And you can download that from the Young Citizens website. I hope that that is useful um, and has given you some ideas of things that you can do with your children, even now during the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic. That's our email address, make a difference challenge at youngcitizens.org. Please do get in touch if we can help you in any way. And we really look forward to seeing and hearing the results of your Make a Difference Challenge projects um, with your children in schools this year. Take care.